Welcome to the Workers' Reading Room. Today I'm reading American Trade Unionism by William Z. Foster. This is Chapter 9, The Movement for Amalgamation and a Labor Party. Although the TUEL made its influence deeply felt in many of the struggles of the stormy days of the early 1920s, it scored its swiftest and greatest successes in its big triple drive for amalgamation, for a labor party, and for recognition of Soviet Russia. It conducted a nationwide offensive with all its forces for these three issues. The whole labor movement was shaken by its campaign. Great masses of trade unionists rallied to the TUEL slogans. More than one half of the trade union movement openly supported one or all its three central demands. Within a few months, the TUEL had made them the main issues confronting the AF of L and railroad brotherhoods. The huge response to these three TUEL slogans evidenced the existing wave of radicalization among the masses. The workers saw in industrial unionism through amalgamation the road to real unity and power, the way to organize the unorganized and to stop the disastrous situation of one group of unions in an industry working while the rest were striking, which had proved so ruinous in the recent great railroad building, printing, and other strikes and which was the outstanding weakness of the packing house and steel campaigns. The workers saw in the Labour Party an effective answer, on the one hand, to the broken promises and strike-breaking troops, courts, and police of the government, and on the other, to the fatal non-partisan political policy of the AFL leaders. And in their wide demand for the recognition of Soviet Russia, the workers expressed their natural proletarian solidarity with the new socialist republic. In the TUEL campaign as a whole, they saw the way opening to a more honest, powerful, and effective labor movement. The organized forces behind this big TUEL movement took the form of a broad united front of left-wingers and progressives. The Communist Party and the TUEL were driving left-wing forces, while the progressives, chiefly the Fitzpatrick Knuckles Farmer Labor Party group, cooperated sympathetically. It was essentially a continuation and growth of the combination that had carried through the packing house and steel campaigns. The movement centered in Chicago and the amalgamation campaign proper took its national impetus from the adoption by the Chicago Federation of Labor on March 19, 1922, of a resolution presented by TUEL delegates, which, after reciting the tragedy of craft disunity, concluded as follows. Resolve that we, the Chicago Federation of Labor, in regular meeting, call upon the American Federation of Labor to take the necessary action toward bringing about the required solidarity within the ranks of organized labor, and that, as a first start in this direction, the various international unions be called into conference for the purpose of arranging to amalgamate all the unions in the respective industries into single organizations, each of which shall cover one industry. Reactionaries, led by Vice President Nelson, fought against this resolution, but were voted down by 114 to 37. Then followed a big national TUEL sweep under the slogan, Amalgamation or Annihilation. During the next 18 months, the Chicago Resolution was widely endorsed and the Solidarity Movement expressed itself in many get-together tendencies. Sixteen international unions, including the Railway Clerks, Railway Maintenance of Way, Iron Molders, Butcher Workmen, Typographical Union, Bakery Workers, Lithographers, Brewery Workers, Amalgamated Clothing Workers, Furriers, Amalgamated Food Workers, Bookbinders, Metal Polishers, Firefighters, Textile Workers, and Shoe Workers voted outright for amalgamation, while the Ladies' Garment Workers, Railroad Trainmen, Railroad Firemen, and several other internationals voted for Federation or Partial Amalgamation. Likewise, 17 state federations of labor, including such important bodies as those of Pennsylvania, Ohio, Indiana, Michigan, Wisconsin, Minnesota, Oregon, Nebraska, Washington, South Dakota, Utah, Colorado, etc., adopted amalgamation resolutions. Besides this, scores of central labor councils and thousands of local unions took similar action. We were well within the truth when we declared at the time that more than 2 million workers or about one-half the organized trade union movement, responded to the TUEL amalgamation slogan. From Canada, Tim Buck reported, Amalgamation resolutions have been endorsed during the past year by almost every kind of union in every part of Canada. 
including the Alberta Federation of Labor and seven of the largest central labor councils, or all told, over 50% of the members affiliated to the Trades Congress of Canada. The campaign for the Labour Party was also very effective. The Labour Party movement had sprung up spontaneously at many points in the years 1918-20, to 20, especially in Minnesota, New York, and Chicago. But the poor showing in the national elections of 1920 had paralyzed the newly formed Farmer Labour Party, and it lingered along, more dead than alive, under the control of the Fitzpatrick Knuckles CF of L Group. Then, in agreement with Fitzpatrick, the Workers' Party and the TUEL began to push the Labour Party issue. Result? An upsurge that was even more extensive than the amalgamation movement. Many international unions, state federations of labor, central labor councils, and local unions voted for the Labour Party. During this campaign, the TUEL put out a national referendum to 35,000 local unions on the Labour Party question and received over 7,000 endorsements and doubtless many more locals endorsed it without notifying us. The Labour Party movement culminated in the Chicago July 3, 1923 convention. 1936. That's the end of Chapter 9. Thank you for listening to the Workers' Reading Room. Have a good one, folks. <laughs>